Hey guys, welcome to lesson 8 of how to make iPhone apps with no programming experience. In this lesson, we're going to complete our user interface by adding the second card image view, a background image view, and the deal button, all utilizing the auto layout constraint and size class concepts that we learned in the previous lessons. Now that you know the basics of auto layout constraints and size classes, this part is going to be pretty easy for you. So what I'm going to do is drag another one, another image view onto the view. But what you can also do, delete this for now, what you can also do is click your image view, press command D to duplicate it. And you can see here, I've got another copy of it. But what I would do first and foremost is go over to the document outline here it's named the same way. So I would highlight that and press enter and then change that name just so it doesn't get too confusing. So as you can see, it also copied the sizing constraints because the sizing constraints are part of the actual element. However, it did not copy the positioning constraints. So we're going to have to add those. So what I'm going to do is click the second card open up the alignment menu, vertically center in the container. And then I'm missing an X position constraint. But remember, I want it to be 50 from the right edge uh, on portrait size classes. And I want it to be 150 from the right edge on landscape size classes. So now I'm going to go into the specific size classes. So I'm going to go into this one for all iPhones and portrait. And actually, I don't even see my card. So where is that? Let's go resolve auto layout constraints, update frames. Oh, there it is. It's right over top. So make sure that you've selected second card. If you're not sure which is second card, um, go here in the document outline. Just select it from here so you're sure. Select second card. Go to this pin menu. Uh, uncheck constraint to margins, enable the right margin this time, select 50, press tab, and then add one constraint. So now let's update frames. And there we go. This is only in the portrait size class, remember, so now we're going to jump over to the landscape size class. And again, my second card is probably over top this one. So I'm going to select second card. I'm going to go back to the pin menu, uncheck constraint to margins, enable the right margin, and this time I'm going to set to 150. Press tab, add one constraint, click this button, and go update frames. Uh, let's give this guy, nope, he's got a background too. So now let's uh, command R to run the project, and we are going to see both cards like that. So there we go. Next, we're going to add a button. So I am going to go back to the any width and any height size class. Now I'm going to search for button down here. And in this size class, Xcode complains about uh, this second card image view not having a an X position constraint, but I'm just going to ignore that because I know in the specific size classes, um, I do have those constraints. Okay, so this is my button. I'm going to select the button. I'm going to go up here and change the title to uh, deal. And I am also going to set some constraints for this guy. So remember, I'm in the any width and any height size class. I'm going to horizontally center it. But in terms of where it is vertically from the bottom of the screen, I'm going to make that specific to whether it's in portrait or landscape. So again, I'm going to jump into the portrait size class. So you can see my deal button is way off there. But I'm going to highlight it. I'm going to go into the pin menu, I'm going to uncheck constraint to margins, I'm going to enable the bottom constraint, and I'm going to say 200. Add one constraint. OK, 
Okay, now I'm going to click this button and update frames. So there's my deal button for the portrait orientation. I'm going to jump into the landscape one. And you can see my button is way down here. I can't even see it. Can't click it. But I can click the button from the document outline. So I'm going to select it from the document outline like this. I'm going to go into the pin menu, uncheck constraint to margins, enable the bottom margin, and now I'm going to say 50. Press tab, add one constraint. Actually, you can also select this drop down, update all frames and containers, and then click add constraint. And it's going to add that constraint and then update all of the views. So you don't have to go here and update frames from this button here. So if you remember to do that, you save a step. Okay, so now we've got our deal button and let's check out how it looks by running our app. Pressing Command R. Okay, so we've got our button right there. That might be a little too high in portrait, so we can change that. And there's the button in the landscape view. So I'm just gonna adjust it in portrait to something else. Let's jump into portrait really quickly. I'm gonna select that constraint and instead of 200 here, I'm just going to say 150. And then let's add the background. So let's search here for image view. Before we add it to the view, however, make sure you change it back to any width and any height because you want that background to be visible uh, on any width and any height. If you only add it to this size class, then it's only going to show up in portrait mode. So I'm going to go back to any width and any height. I'm going to just drag the image view here. So what we're going to do is we're going to add constraints for this background. So go into the pin menu and I'm going to uncheck constraint to margins. What we're going to do is enable all four margins, but you got to be careful here because this spacing says spacing to the nearest neighbor. Now this image view for this right margin, you may think that if I set this to zero, it's going to be flush against the right edge, right? But that's in fact not true because that spacing is relative to the nearest neighbor. And the nearest neighbor for this image view is actually the second card image view. If you click this little drop down arrow here, you can see it's going to be positioned zero against the, uh, the left edge of this second card. Instead, I wanna change this to the view okay and change that to zero so just double check that pull down the drop down make sure it says view and it, when you do that it changes the number on you but enter zero same for this one I'm going to change it to be relative to the view and not the bottom layout guide change that to zero here that's fine and for the top margin I'm going to say view and not the top layout guide because I want the background to stretch even up to the top edge of the screen, even if it's the status bar. So I'm gonna go view, I'm gonna hit zero and press tab. Now I'm gonna add these four constraints. I'm gonna click this little button here and update frames. And then you can see that my image views here all got mispositioned and my button got mispositioned too, because remember in this any width and any height size class, we haven't positioned the uh, the two card views for the x-axis and this deal button doesn't have any sort of position on the y-axis. We added those constraints in the specific portrait size class and the landscape size class. But you're going to see when we run the app it's going to work out. Right now we have to add a background to the image view because we actually can't see anything without an image. So I'm going to add this pink background for uh, my background image view. And then in the document outline, I'm going to rename this to background. Now I'm going to run the app by pressing command R. So now we've got this pink background that's covering all of our elements, but we can fix that. Let's go back into our storyboard and you see how all of these elements, we've got the first card, the second card, the deal button and the background. Well, the background is over top everything, right? All we have to do is grab the background here, click and drag it all the way up there. So it's the element that is sitting behind all of these other guys. 
Now if we run it, we're going to see that the background will be behind all of the elements. Okay, so there we go. So now we got the basis of our user interface. What we can do now is remove the colors from these elements so that they're back to the default state. So we're going to select my background and change it back to default. Select the first card, change the background back to default. Select the second card and change the background back to default. Now when you run it, you can't see anything, but in subsequent lessons, we'll be adding images to these uh, image views.